training shoes. Correct. The politicians who were present at the Abbey gig were appalled by Anna Fred's embarrassing slip, and so the construction of the Sydney Entertainment Centre was set in train. Many wanted it to be called the Johnny O'Keefe Entertainment Centre instead, but it didn't happen. Bummer. Oh, come on. What is this? The wide world of sports? Wrong. You're not really trying too hard out there, are you? Wrong. In the mid-60s, a young Paul Keating managed a group that released two singles but enjoyed no chart success. What was their name? The Scumbags? The Mangy Maggots? The Ramrods? Or the Bracket Creeps? No way! Our former Prime Minister would have nothing to do with a band that uses that kind of language. No way! Our former Prime Minister would have nothing to do with a band that uses that kind of language. Yes! Former Prime Minister Paul Keating, who is known to be a massive Tom Jones fan, managed the Sydney act The Ramrods and then gave up to go into politics. An up-and-coming act called The Bee Gees once appeared as their support act and they were booed by The Ramrods fans. No way! Our former Prime Minister would have nothing to do with a band that uses that kind of language. Who compared the Saturday morning rock show's Sounds and Sounds Unlimited? Was it Donny Sutherland? Ross D. Wiley, Ray Burgess, or Bert Newton? Yes, former horse jockey Donny Sutherland presented this hard-bitten, take-no-prisoners show on a Saturday morning, which rated highly and outlived even Countdown. Donny never failed to be cheerful and chirpy while interviewing rock stars who were often a bit tired and cranky from partying on the previous Friday night. What a guy! Uh-uh, wrong era. The great Ross D. Wiley was instead the host of the groovy shows Uptight and Happening 71, Groovy Man. Wrong. Ray Burgess did host the ABC afternoon rock show Flashes in the 70s, as well as guest comparing Countdown many times. Uh-uh. 1979 Gold Logie winner Bert Newton could hardly spin the wheel for Don on late night TV and then be on sounds first thing in the morning. Wrong. Which young Talent Time singer did international megastar Liberace handpick to join his United States tour in 1971? Was it Angry Anderson, Daryl Braithwaite, Norman Gunston or Jamie Redfern? Oh yeah, right. Wrong. Uh-uh, Daryl was just too old. To be on Young Talent Time, that is. Oh yeah, right. Wrong is the right answer. Liberace, the diamond-encrusted piano-playing sensation, spotted 13-year-old Jamie Redfern at the King of Pop Awards and asked him to become his co-star on his massive US tour. The beloved Jamie Redfern went on to win the TV Week King of Pop Award himself in 1974. John Farnham had many hits before You're the Voice. As Johnny Farnham, he had a hit about Sadie. Who was she? The cyclone that devastated Darwin? A cleaning lady? A bull elephant seal? Or the fat kid in the sorbent ads? Get real. As if. Hello. Wrong. Yahoo! You got it right! Sadie the Cleaning Lady was an early hit for Farnsey who went on to sing for the Little River Band and then whacked on a dryser bone to relaunch himself with massive success with the Whispering Jack album. Get real. As if. Hello. Wrong. Get real. As if. Hello. Wrong. A song by kinky Brisbane band Regurgitator has the controversial title I sucked a lot of f to get where I am. Are they talking about lollipops, icy poles, slurpees or none of the above? Wrong. Suck a lot of lollipops and all you'll get is a bad case of acne. Uh-uh. A lot of icy poles will leave you with a very cold mouth, but it won't make you famous. Wrong. No way. Sucking a lot of Slurpees will only make you hyperactive for a while. Wrong. You got it right. The correct answer is none of the above. We can't say any more because the game isn't that educational. Courtney Love toured Australia with her band Hole in 1995. On stage in Sydney, she said, Doesn't that boy look just like my husband? Which dead blonde was she comparing to her deceased spouse, Kurt Cobain? Was it 
Andy Gibb, Daniel Johns of Silverchair, Marilyn Munro, or Bon Scott. Oh, come on, show a little respect. Wrong. Get real, the guy is still alive and kicking. He's no dead blonde. However, this is a trick question, so in fact it is the right answer. Silverchair have often been unfairly compared to Nirvana and the late Kurt Cobain, and were for a time given the nickname Nirvana's in Pyjamas by bitter and twisted oldies in the music press. Yeah, right. Don't give up your day job to become a brain surgeon. Wrong. Wrong. Although now that they're both six feet under, they probably look a little more alike now. Fill in the missing words to this Skyhook's hit single. It's a horror movie right there on my TV. Horror movie right there on my TV. Horror movie and there's no abuse. Horror movie. What is shocking them right out of their brain? Is it Ray Martin's hairpiece? The 6.30 News? Hey, hey, it's Saturday. Or Better Homes and Gardens? Absolutely not. Ray Martin almost certainly does not have a hairpiece at all. Is the right answer. Horror movie, it's a 6 news. Was the stinger to the Skyhooks hit performed on the very first colour episode of Countdown in 1975. And it's shot with me right out of my brain. Wrong. Although Red Simons from Skyhooks is a long-time regular on the show that has come to have a central place in Australian art and culture. Wrong. Although Shirley from Skyhooks is a long-time regular on this TV show, showing that he can not only sing like an angel, but that he can handle a power drill as well. A true renaissance bloke. I said, do you speak in my language? He just smiled and gave me a blank. Is it a German-English dictionary... A free set of steak knives, a Grammy Award, or a Vegemite sandwich. Wrong. Anyway, they said they were in Belgium at the time with a guy who was six foot four and full of muscles. Maybe it was Van Damme. Wrong. But you get the secrets Lucky Dip prize, a free record. Offer expires 30th of November 1973. Close but not quite, Men at Work did receive a Grammy for the massively successful album Business As Usual. They released another album and then broke up after the rest of the band found that they couldn't see eye to eye with Colin Hay anymore. Yes, that wasn't too hard, was it? Down Under featured on the massively successful album Business As Usual. Men at Work released another album and then split after the rest of the band found that they couldn't see eye to eye with Colin Hay anymore. Yes, my child, you are truly brain master of the rock and roll firmament. At last, you may receive your secret prize, a fragment of the essence of rock and roll, a spiritual gift that will bring lasting happiness, so much more meaningful than a crass, materialistic prize. Congratulations, you have reached a higher stage of enlightenment.